and I, I want to speak about the APAT RAO and uh, thank you also for the implementation. And uh, we worked out, uh, I want to present you the focus of our work within the Sea River project. And we worked out this, uh, this work, what we have done together with uh, the um, Office Revital. And we also have a great dream, and it's an honor for me to present it. Uh, our project uh, in this case today, and also thank you uh, for the possibility to present our work. And Susanne is also thank you to Susanne. Susanne is not here. She got the baby uh, dur uh, during the project duration, and she is staying at home. But also thank you to Susanne. And what we done? You see here a slide about our. Um, uh, project area about our pilot area is located in the south of Austria. The Drava uh, flows from west to east across the provinces Eastern Tyrol and Carinthia. And a little bit more in detail, you see here uh, the pilot area uh, goes from the Oberdrauburg from the border from Eastern Tyrol to to uh, Carinthia, and the, the length is in about uh, 70 kilometers long. Some key facts you see here on the border: uh, we have um, we have a, a, a 2,100 square kilometers, and the 100 years flood about. Uh, uh, 1,029 cubic meters per second. We have a middle slope about 1.5 to 3 promille, and um, the the fish region is the grayling region. Um, here you see an, uh, an old map uh, in Austria called Franzistischer Kataster from 1822 to 1828. And you see the Drava is, and you have a lot of interaction between, between the land close, the, um, close to the river and um, uh, a lot of uh, gravel banks and uh, great uh, gray alder wetlands and really a, a branched river. And when we look and we overlay this with the actual situation, with the catastrophe, you see the settlements uh, comes closer to the river. The river re regulation uh, uh, occur as in, as we also see before at the, by, by the moor. And um, railways were bu uh, built and streets. And what what are the con consequences for this um, situation? Uh, we we are saved the the land use and the agricultural use for for small floods, but we also have uh, big damages by great floods. Floods and um, another big problem we have we see with the focus after the floods uh, 1965 is the riverbed erosion. And uh, what consequences? We have conflicts with interactive between land use and the river itself. We have uh, loss of rare spe species and habitats, but also a monotonous river course problems like uh, the, who are also focused with the Water Framework Directive by aquatic habitats and fish barriers, water power stations, and so on. Um, in 1991, uh, uh, had, um, river engineers and environments uh, recognized together that uh, to work together and to make uh, measurements who uh, both have uh, benefits. We worked out together a concept of measures and then a lot of measures were implemented with the milestones of two life projects, the EU Aufverbund Oberredrau and Lebensader Oberredrau. The funding was all in all 10 million euros by the uh, European Union, but also from the national funding, we get we also spent uh, 10 million again in this region, and this is also very uh, essential for this uh, um, for this region uh, in Carinthia. And now, 20, uh, 2013, we decided to show back uh, are we good on the, are we on a good way, and to make a new integrative. Uh, concept of measures to show what measures works in a good way, where we have still problems, and what's the challenge for, uh, challenges for the future. 
uh, the workflow of, an, of the River Development Scheme, who is an integrate, integrative planning tool in Austria, is uh, at the beginning we worked out the, uh, uh, the actual state and to make an analysis of them. Then we make an integrative analysis of, of the uh, both sectors together and the deficit analysis. We developed a mission statement called Light Build, and uh, at the end we have a program of measures. This was the situation in 1991. And we see at the upper Traupa here an example of the river widening, St. Peter. We, there, it gives a lot of measures, technical measures, to stop riverbed erosion. But we see and we recognize that self-forming river, uh, river widening, as you see here, uh, where we, we save the land use uh, behind with coins, are the best way to, to, to solve problems from nature conservation and also to stop riverbed erosion and to, um, to, to increase the, the flood protection. Uh, and and uh, uh, with the consequences to get more benefits, multi-benefits uh, sectors for flood protection, retention areas on the one side, but also aquatic, terrestrial habitats, morphodynamics takes place, and also the people comes to the river, and this also helps by re for recreation areas. Uh, here is another example by Kleblach Lind. Um, but up to 1991, the, plan, uh, the planning frame conditions are changed. Uh, now we have, uh, it's, it's always and harder, to, harder and harder to get the funding middle uh, the, uh, for um, and national funding and EU funding, EU indirect projects, but also national funding for to implement measures. And also the laws have changed. We have another super uh, orientated instruments like the Water Framework Directive and the Flood Directives, who also we had to uh, to, to consider. The, the municipalities have also changed. Uh, they have uh, developed in in different ways of the economic economic way and. We have experiences from uh, the last 20 years. And therefore, we decided for, to make an evaluation. The evaluation we decided, on the one hand, to show uh, about how works the, the, the implemented measures, on the one hand. And on the other hand, we show about the whole uh, uh, upper driver in the pilot area. And at the end, um, we, we had an, a new river development scheme. And this uh, we whole process, as you see here, were attended by uh, a lot of workshops, local and national workshop, work, workshops with uh, stakeholders. Uh, and we started with gather, uh, gathering data, what all uh, planning data, and from both from flood protection, nature conservation, and ecological, who are occurred in this uh, in the region of the Upper Drau. Uh, and uh, with the help in, in this discussing discussion and uh, in the discussing uh, with the stakeholder, we made we evaluated an evaluation profile who is here. Uh, uh, decided into different chapters. At the beginning, we, we described every stretch where re uh, restoration takes place uh, in a general description, description. Then we make an analysis of the actual state. Then we make an, an evaluation uh, concerning the defined aims uh, um, based on criteria. And at the end, we make a resume for every stretch and uh, recommendations. You see here. Um, the, our assessment, the criteria come, goes from dynamic bed level stability to flood situation, but also the effectivity of flood protection, biological possibilities, uh, aquatic and dynamic and uh, diversity, and so on. And we make the assessment uh, based on criteria, but also from experts from very high to very low. And we also uh, um, make the assessment concerning the achievement of the original defined measurement aims on the one hand, but also to the aims concerning the mission statement. And this also were, uh, we discussed with, with stakeholders in every sector. And uh, because it's really uh, um, the main part of our uh, evaluation to speak with the uh, stakeholders and to discuss them what, uh, from, their, from their point of view, works in a good way, what works where, uh, where we have still problems, and what the challenges are for in the future. 
Here are, you see a slide uh, the, of uh, all several stakeholders who were by, by uh, local stakeholder workshops uh, involved. And we made a lot of folders, um, publications in newspapers, journals, internal, external workshops, local workshops, national workshops, uh, excursions. Uh, we worked also, we go to into schools and uh, worked with the children to bring them to the, to the river and info points. And this was really essential for the success for the measurements. Uh, uh, now we'll come to the outputs. We see them um, all in all uh, by the 70 river kilometers, uh, 43 of this uh, 70 kilometers were now uh, revitalized. And you see here the um, an analysis concerning the, the bed level, a digital elevation model and cross sections. There we see the, there we can see the dynamic. And when we consider the longitudinal intersection, you will see that the bed level is going up. A another uh, slide, uh, see the situation of the Weho section. And there we see at the beginning uh, by, uh, um, runoff overdrawback, we see a big dynamic and uh, uh, on the and coming closer to the to the end of the project area we can uh, recognize that the better better erosion has improved a lot uh, another uh, essential input is the sediment input from the tributaries we see here an a dam of a tributary uh, that where, where it's now possible that the gravel goes through this dam and this, uh, this uh, uh, gravel and sediment comes now into the drow and feed the drow with sediments and therefore the, the, the bed level goes up. Uh, concerning the aquatic situation, we see now we have uh, 1,060 hectare uh, Natura 2000 European protected areas at the Upper Drau, and we see that uh, it really developed well. Um, uh, for example, we have uh, 150 uh, species of birds, uh, and 51 are red listed of them, and it works good, but we have still also problems with energy power stations. We have flash floods, and this we see here in the, especially by the aquatic situation, the river restoration areas who are not affected by flash flood works good. The biomass goes uh, uh, highly uh, up, but we also see that we have still problems in, in these areas where we have also made uh, revitalization projects, but uh, the flash flood um, have, uh, uh, um, is going to, to a stress for the fish, and, and we see here that it's going down. But I think from the topic of, uh, from the morphological situation, we have uh, do a good a good job. Um, concerning the uh, stakeholder involvement, we know the, the stakeholder uh, since we started with the River Development Scheme 1991, and this the main stakeholders and key stakeholders take, us, take always part in the decision, but it's not also easy to motivate them to, to participate them in all projects, but it's, it's necessary to, to, to speak with the key players and the representatives, and also to change them in some cases. Uh, and and stakeholder involvement is, is really uh, the essential part by, of, for the success of the project. We make a stakeholder agreement with the key players, flood protection, representatives of flood pro uh, protection, nature conservation, aquatic, ecological, agriculture and tourism in the, in the Sea River project. And the outcomes now are we have an, an analysis, uh, like I called before, uh, evalu evaluation profiles in German Steckbriefe, a measurement concept, and an evaluation document. And also we had a database where all data at the Upper Drau were collected. We have a great monitoring through the two live projects and also from the national monitoring. And this also sampled in this database now. Uh, and also uh, an outcome is, is, an, is, is two maps about the scale 1 to 50,000 and 1 to, tw to 25,000 uh, who uh, looked the, the measurements, what we still have to do concerning flood protection, river situation, ecological and recreation. 
coming to the end, and uh, I want to say thank you for your attention. We see uh, it's really essential uh, uh, that Rava is, Upper Rava is really a lifeline uh, in, in this area, and the people come there together, and it's an essential part for this, this economic low uh, region in Austria. Thank you for your attention. Hello, good morning. Um, uh, my name is Semra Fejzebegovic. Uh, from, uh, I'm coming from a Hydro Engineering Institute uh, from Sarajevo, Bosnia and Herzegovina, uh, and I'm very uh, happy to be here at the Europe uh, River Restoration Conference in Vienna. Uh, we had uh, one uh, poster uh, and participation last year, but uh, this was an uh, improvement uh, uh, with participation uh, with this project on the uh, Europe River Restoration Conference here uh, in Vienna. Uh, so I would like uh, to present today uh, one of the pilot cases uh, within uh, Sea River, uh, River Project, uh, transnational uh, um, uh, uh, cooperation program uh, project and uh, Neretva River Corridor uh, is uh, one among uh, five pilot cases. Uh, the idea uh, actually uh, if uh, someone uh, is not introduced uh, began uh, with the Drava declaration um, uh, with Drava declaration signed in 2008. Uh, so the idea was uh, to uh, spread uh, the idea of uh, Drava declaration into uh, five uh, more uh, pilot cases in Southeast Europe. So the Neretva River Corridor within Bosnia and Herzegovina, and it is a trans. Uh, transnational corridor between Bosnia and Herzegovina and Croatia is uh, one of the pilot cases. Uh, so it's a transboundary river basin in Southeast Europe. Uh, Neretva uh, River uh, was um, uh, one uh, of uh, unique uh, rivers uh, within these uh, five pilot cases uh, within Sea River Project uh, because of the unique administrative uh, uh, setup uh, within Bosnia and Herzegovina. So it was one of the biggest challenges for us uh, for the establishment of the uh, cross-sectoral uh, network. Uh, within the project because uh, the administrative setup set in Bosnia and Herzegovina is complex. Uh, after the war, uh, it is in 1992, 1995, uh, there is a state level uh, um, authorities, then uh, there is uh, two entities uh, uh, within Bosnia and Herzegovina in charge for water management and uh, also for management of other sectors. Uh, and uh, also uh, uh, within uh, one of the entities, the Federation of Bosnia and Herzegovina, there is uh, uh, cantonal level, uh, so it is the third uh, level, and also municipal municipalities are the fourth level of the uh, authorities uh, in um, different management of different sectors. Uh, Neret River Basin uh, is uh, shared uh, by Bosnia and Herzegovina and Croatia, uh, and also one of the specificities, uh, because this is a karst terrain, uh, is uh, that it is um, connected, uh, hydro hydraulically connected uh, uh, through the Trebišnica River uh, uh, with the Montenegro, uh, uh, the third uh, state actually, uh, so uh, it is a very complex uh, river basin. Uh, about uh, 10,100 square kilometers of the basin area belongs to Bosnia and Herzegovina and 280 uh, square kilometers uh, to Croatia and uh, it flows, uh, Neretva flows into the Adriatic uh, Sea uh, and um, uh, uh, the delta of Neretva, uh, Neretva River is uh, actually a uh, uh, mountainous uh, character uh, of the river in the upstream uh, and then uh, uh, in uh, downstream uh, it is a lowland river. Uh, the delta of Neretva uh, is um, um, a shared between Bosnia and Herzegovina and Croatia. It's about uh, 20,000 hectares uh, and uh, about um, 8,000 hectares in Bosnia and Herzegovina and uh, 12,000 hectares in, is in Croatia. Uh, and uh, Neretva Delta is one of the most beautiful uh, and the last uh, uh, remnants of the Mediterranean wetlands uh, in uh, uh, in the Mediterranean area. Uh, so it is Natura 2000 site in the, uh, sites uh, in the Croatia and also Ramsar site, uh, sites in Bosnia and Herzegovina and also uh, in Croatia. Uh, 
we, uh, within this uh, Se River project, concentrated on the pressure, uh, pressures within the Neretva River. Uh, and uh, like uh, most uh, rivers within the Southeast Europe, uh, uh, it's um, uh, the pressure factor for Neretva River is alteration of the hydrological regime uh, because of the water use uh, uh, of Neretva River for uh, different purposes, uh, uh, for hydroenergetic uh, purposes, for uh, water use uh, for municipalities, uh, also uh, um, uh, for tourism, for uh, recreation, uh, for um, uh, uh, different purposes, uh, navigation one part uh, uh, downstream, and uh, also um, one of the pressures of, uh, uh, on Neretva River is uh, uncontrolled urbanization and excessive uh, illegal hunting and fishing in the wetlands, the erosion of the riverbeds, and uh, land decline of the groundwater levels in the Trebišnica and Neretva uh, left and also right. Uh, that means eastern and uh, uh, west uh, 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 part of the Neretva uh, in Bosnia and Herzegovina. Uh, one, uh, this is methodology uh, which we used uh, within the Se River project. Actually, the objective of the Se River project for these five pilot cases, uh, and Neretva is uh, one uh, uh, among them. Uh, uh, among uh, Bodrog, Prut, uh, Vyosa, uh, Socha, and Neritva is the five pilot case. Uh, we actually wanted the main objective was to, in, uh, to establish the multi sectoral uh, stakeholder, actually, to initiate the multi sectoral uh, stakeholder network uh, because. Uh, 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 the, because of the ethnic diversity, different political situation, uh, different problems within water management, uh, also within uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina, as I said, uh, within the country, uh, in charge of the uh, different uh, se uh, different uh, level of the authorities. Uh, so. Um, uh, this was very interesting uh, for the uh, Neretva uh, River. Uh, the methodology uh, used uh, uh, within uh, Drava uh, declaration and uh, Drava pilot cases because they were uh, going more in details uh, within this project and uh, new approach also with the contemporary uh, uh, rivers and uh, also uh, river corridor was, was an introduction of the new um, a new term and a new definition uh, for the water agencies uh, that we are dealing with as a stakeholders, uh, main stakeholders within the country. Uh, so the river corridor uh, was introduced as the main uh, uh, main uh, um, definition uh, for uh, for the establishment of the multi-stakeholder uh, network and also for the project activities. Uh, so uh, we uh, made uh, uh, within our project team of the Se River, uh, we made a questionnaire together and uh, asked a question uh, to the stakeholders, uh, which uh, later uh, have been used for the preparation of the toolkit uh, as a general. Um, uh, general guideline, it will be the end result of the project, the general guideline for achieving the consensus uh, for the integral uh, cross-sectoral uh, river corridor management. Uh, so uh, we asked the stakeholders uh, different questions, made uh, analysis of these uh, questionnaires. Uh, the uh, project activities uh, were going then in the direction of organ uh, organization of the two national uh, workshops. Uh, one was uh, held in Bosnia and Herzegovina in 2013 in, in uh, June, and the second one was held in Croatia, in Zagreb in uh, uh, 2014. Uh, then after that, uh, we organized uh, the international workshop, transnational, uh, between uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina and Croatia. Uh, it was held in Bosnia and Herzegovina in September uh, this year. Uh, and also after that, we had the two national capacity building seminars for the representatives of different stakeholders, uh, uh, different authorities. Uh, uh, also NGOs, uh, uh, university representatives, uh, and uh, 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 other stakeholders. 
so these are the results uh, uh, of our different individual meetings uh, with stakeholders uh, uh, in defining uh, the joint vision. Uh, so uh, the main result uh, and the purpose actually of this uh, uh, establishment of the stakeholder network within the project was uh, to uh, create a joint vision uh, for Neretva uh, River Corridor and uh, to see with different stakeholders uh, if uh, they agree with that joint vision. Uh, and to uh, actually, we wanted with them to reach common agreement uh, between the countries, between different stakeholders, between different sectors, uh, and uh, uh, to have this uh, joint vision for uh, sustainable river corridor management. Uh, this was a process scheme made for each uh, five pilot cases. Uh, uh, actually, the whole project team of the of the entire Sea River project was participated uh, in uh, giving comments and suggestions of. Uh, uh, how each process in each of the country will uh, go, in which direction. So when we had our individual meetings uh, with stakeholders and national, uh, national uh, workshops, we, uh, uh, we presented that at our steering committee meetings uh, within the Sea River project. So uh, each of the partners, uh, and uh, there were 26 partner organizations uh, within the projects, had a chance uh, to comment on each of the pilot case, each of the country. Uh, and uh, we uh, had uh, valuable comments uh, uh, during these uh, peer review uh, working groups from different countries, different, uh, uh, different institutions uh, from Romania, from uh, Albania, uh, from uh, uh, Croatia, Slovenia, um, uh, Slovakia, and the different uh, countries, uh, 26 uh, as I mentioned, uh, partner institutions were participating. So it was a very valuable uh, experience uh, for the Neretva River Corridor. So uh, we all uh, of, of uh, we all that uh, uh, also had a chance to present uh, to our stakeholders in the country. Uh, and uh, as a main output, uh, uh, after these national workshops, uh, separately held uh, in Bosnia and Herzegovina and in Croatia with different stakeholders, uh, we uh, added all the comments to this uh, draft uh, of the joint uh, vision for Neretva River Corridor, which was in line with different EU uh, directives. And all the stakeholders uh, give, uh, gave their comments. Uh, and also, uh, uh, after uh, agreed uh, joint vision, um, which we called, uh, named that uh, draft river framework, uh, we um, uh, made a list of the problems uh, uh, as uh, actually ideas uh, for the future uh, project proposals uh, for the continuation of this project. Uh, also uh, some uh, uh, transnational project proposals and also within the country, uh, within different sectors. Uh, so uh, some of the, of the lessons learned within uh, this project uh, and with the whole process of the Say River was uh, that it was very hard to reach the local level when the strategic planning is the issue. And it is very important to open the awareness of the local levels because all sector politics should enable the sustainable development of the local communities. Uh, we actually were very satisfied uh, with the National Capacity Building Seminar in Bosnia and Herzegovina, which held in uh, uh, 8th of October uh, this year, uh, where we uh, actually had a beginning of this multi-sectoral uh, stakeholder network discussion because we had a local uh, community Representative, it was uh, 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 in Konitz uh, along the Neretva River. Uh, then we also had utility companies uh, where they uh, organized also study visit uh, to the beginning of the construction of the wastewater treatment plant in Konitz, uh, financed by the World Bank project. And also we uh, uh, had uh, uh, agency for water uh, from uh, Mostar uh, in charge for the uh, water management of the Adriatic Sea uh, catchment. Uh, so also we had the forestry sector uh, present uh, and also environment, uh, physical planning sector. So uh, uh, energy sector also was uh, present uh, from 
energy management power company in Bosnia and Herzegovina, and uh, we really uh, had the start of the discussion, uh, and uh, this uh, list of the problems uh, actually uh, uh, were presented, uh, drafted, and presented to the stakeholders, and they were also uh, very satisfied with the beginning of this multi-sectoral uh, cooperation. So uh, this is all for Nerit Variva. Hello, everybody. Uh, for those that they see me for the first time, my name is Saimir Hoja. I'm coming from Albania. And uh, in my presentation, I, before I start my presentation, I say a few remarks about it and my role in the project Sea River implementation in Albania. I'm a consultant. Uh, I have worked in the environmental issues for 12 years, uh, covering the nature protection policy and water resource management in Albania. And I uh, have been uh, hired by the Albanian Geological Survey, a coordinating uh, body that was in charge of project implementation in Albania. So I have been assisting the Albanian Geological uh, staff to implement the activities and trying to coordinate with uh, other stakeholders in Albania to carry out the tasks and uh, achieve the results. So in this presentation, I'm going to present to you uh, the methodology that we applied in the project implementation what kind of activities we applied, and uh, what are the results, and uh, what are the most important issues that we achieved for Viosa River in Albania, in a terms of in a national level and also in a transboundary level. Uh, before we started the project implementation two years ago, uh, there was a situation when there was no any structure, competent structure, dealing with uh, management of Viosa River. Even in a central level, there was, uh, the, there was a structure, but very weak in terms of physical number and also in terms of capacities. So the issues of water resources, river basin management, was uh, hidden issues and not uh, even in the national or regional or local agenda, let's say. We are very lucky, let's say, we say very common in Albania, that Albania is, uh, uh, has a lot of rivers, but we don't discharge waters to the other, we don't have recipient countries, so we receive waters and we discharge in the sea. But even that, quite uh, last uh, couple of years, we created problem in Mediterranean Sea to our neighboring countries. So we have to think about that, I and mean, Albanian government should think about that, that uh, uh, we cannot stay anymore as we stayed before. So don't consider rivers as important uh, ecosystems, and uh, that's why uh, this was the situation before we started the project implementation. The legislation at that time was very old and with no clear competence among water users and among water sectors. A lot of uh, confusion among competence in different sectors, agriculture, industry, water supply, wastewater, etc. And uh, there has been some sporadic studies at that time, individual studies from different institutions or uh, NGOs or different projects, but not in, in coordinating way. Sometimes there were overlapping, but not shared and published, let's say, to as many uh, institutions and stakeholders or general public. Uh, at the time we started the project, so many activities have been uh, approved or allowed to be implemented in Viosa. Economic activities in terms of industrial uh, and hydroenergy uh, plan and projects. And those have been taken, approved, without any uh, detailed analyzes any assessment without any uh, consultation, so a, a kind of non-transparent way. So this was the situation before we started the project. And we chose Viosa River as a pilot river because uh, uh, the only river that attracted little attention was Drini River in north of Albania, starting from Lake Prespa as a sub basin, going through Albania and Macedonia, Kosovo and Montenegro. So there, is a, there was a little attention, but uh, helped, assisted by Sweden and the uh, uh, Mediterranean, uh, for, uh, Mediterranean Office, Global Water Partnership for Mediterranean. So they supported us and to create kind of a willingness to manage the Drini River. But for Viosa, nobody was uh, listening, discussing, or taking any action. So we started the project few words about the Osa River. Uh, it's the second l l important river in Albania, coming from Greece, 
one third of this watershed is in Greece. Uh, biodiversity is very rich, so Viosa is very beautiful, very rich in biodiversity. Uh, local community is based on traditional uh, use of natural resources, agriculture and livestock is the main activity for local community. And it's very well preserved, let's say, and uh, it's naturally flowing without any dams built so far, and with less negative impacts on its watershed in general. So this is the general assessment that we have, we have for Viosa. So it remains in a good ecological condition. For your information, Viosa is a common female Albanian given name. And uh, because the Viosa is very beautiful and people prefer to give the name after the female. So they pretend, they think that they are beautiful as Viosa River, it is. This is a, a map prepared by Albanian Geological Survey. We have, a, we have another map that is not included here, uh, showing the entire watershed, transboundary watershed. Those are the issues and problems that we assessed when analyzed. Soil, soil erosion in some uh, agricult agriculture and forest areas. Gravel exploitation was a kind of disease in Albania. Uh, rivers have been exploited for gravel, for construction, and without, let's say, uh, appropriate studies, etc. So Viosa was an, uh, a river that uh, has been exploited for, for gravel. Pollution as the other rivers in Albania is a big problem in terms of solid waste and wastewater. Hydro energy projects and plants for Viosa, there is one, but not yet, not, is not uh, continuing or is, is kind of uh, suspending a hydropower and there is plants for many other. So these are the risks and problems that, and also floods in the, up in the uh, lower part of Viosa in Albania. So those are the main issues in Albania for Viosa. So the, when it's the, speaking about the Sea River project, uh, the methodology that we uh, applied is the, the, the participatory methodology. We want to involve as many institutions, we wanted to involve as many institutions and stakeholders to sit together and discuss about the OSA and to think about its, uh, the management. We started the working group, uh, we created a working group, so Albania Geological Survey as an institution in charge of project coordination and implementation, created a working group, officials of this uh, institution, and independent experts to coordinate all activities of the project. A stakeholder network was created uh, with, a diff, uh, with a representative from different stakeholders, from na in a national level, different ministries, regional and local level, regional councils, prefectures, regional uh, directorates, uh, governmental directorates, local uh, commune, communities, authorities, including non-governmental organizations from universities and from private sector. Those, this was the, the, the network that has been created, sit together and updated continuously during the project implementation. Experts and scientists have been involved during the project implementation for river, uh, Riviosa River Assessment. Consultations and communication have been held among stakeholders through national and local workshops to set up the strategic approach for common management of Yosa River according to the Water Framework Directive and the relevant international convention. So our guiding policy was the Water Framework Directive and the international conventions uh, regarding the, the water resource management and the habitat uh, and ecosystem management. So we collected a lot of information from many institutions, many stakeholders. Some of them they shared freely, let's say, uh, based on a willingness. We used official communication, non-official, friendly, so we collect a lot of information, existing studies, existing, uh, and we assess together with the stakeholders. And uh, we also, in parallel, communicate with NGOs that are active in uh, environmental protection in order to raise the, the, the awareness of the institutions for protection of, uh, of Viosa and uh, to see the decision that have been taken for Viosa River. So as I said, individual consultation, workshops, etc., were some of the action for assuring participation of many institutions and stakeholders. Because before institutions work independently without any formal or non-formal meetings, no discussion, no, no uh, let's say, uh, common uh, actions. 
And also we use media and electronic communication channels to uh, make it more to broad, the, the, to enlarge the participation and disseminating the project results. So a detailed assessment now is prepared through the project. The stakeholder network is established. We have prepared a common vision and objectives for uh, management of the river basin, transboundary river basin. We have a reactivization of NGOs and stakeholders campaigning for pre preservation of USA rivers. And we have an approval of declaration from the stakeholders for integrated management of USA transboundary river. We uh, uh, tried and we used the existing projects or, uh, impl being implemented in Albania in parallel or before that, before our project. And we use the uh, 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 Viosa Eco Museum project, uh, IPA project between Albania and Greece, between two NGOs. And we use the existing network of Greek partners and we involve them in our project, uh, mostly by uh, communication, electronic communication means. We share with them documents, we share the, and we get some uh, support. But most of the, net of the stakeholder, Greek stakeholders, including the Ministry of Environment that is in charge of waters, and the uh, national parks in Greek side, and the uh, university staff and local authorities and prefecture in Greece we sent. So we get some uh, comments, positive comments, that they are in favor of protecting the Osa River as it is in a natural state. We didn't have the, the chance to sit together with them because uh, in most of the answers that we received, uh, let's say indifferent or negative answers, is that they, you want to, especially from officials, they wanted to uh, create, to cooperate with us only through the high official uh, channels, through Ministry of Foreign Affairs or so. They were afraid kind to communicate with us, even in technical level, but however, in our communication, we found that they are in favor with what we have prepared, the common vision and objectives, and they are in favor of declaration that we uh, approved, and we are, which is an appeal for the relevant institution in Albania and Greece to take measures for protecting, preservation, and restoration of Yosa River in Albania and Greece. Those are the maps to illustrate that uh, what we have done. So. All data have been mapping, assessed, and uh, collected in the Albanian Geological Survey. Here are different, this map is the hydropower projects and plants. Here is the old scheme. It means that how, uh, this scheme is handmade, you see, and it's very old project, plan, let's say, which has been taken, approved, approved in 2005 or 2004, 10 years ago, by the previous uh, decision makers. As you can see, it's handmade. Those are pictures from our uh, activities in a national level, local level. We have been discussing, so there are people from different institutions and NGOs and universities, as I said. Pictures showing that we have met, we meet with the high officials, deputy minister, uh, national uh, water uh, entity, different institutions, explaining the project and uh, asking for their support. Here's the uh, last workshop we had in Tirana and we approved the declaration. Here are some pictures regarding Viosa and its beauties and you see and the, the, the fourth on the corner down is work of the hydropower. So now, comparing what, what, was, what was the situation before and what is now, actually, after two, and two years, let's say, we have a different situation. We have a new legislation which is in place with, in line with the European Union directives. Water Framework Directive is transposed in a new law for water resource management in Albania. There are steps for uh, preparing all the bylaws and uh, other regulations especially for management plans and river monitorings. Legally, gravel exploitation is banned, and uh, recently I received news that the ministry is uh, working 
to, uh, for the law enforcement for illegal activities. So legal is banned, but there are illegal. But ministry now, the new government is in place, and they have fined eight companies that, or small firms. They are working on an illegal way. We have new administrative structures now, compared with a weak sector, which was three, composed of three incapable people. Now we have a new administrative structures regarding for river basin management. We have one in a central level, which is directly under the prime minister competencies. It is the national secretariat for river basin management, and the chief of this secretariat is appointed, nominated by the prime minister. We have a good and big directorate full of uh, capacities now in the Ministry of Environment, responsible for river basin management. And also, uh, there are, uh, let's say, the network that we have established is being uh, planned to be used as a technical or, a co let's say, technical body to the state and institutional structures. Efforts are being paid for river banks restoration. Before the budget for river restoration was, was zero, as in the other environmental field, but now there are budgets allocated by the government and by local authorities for the river restoration uh, to avoid uh, the flooding or to uh, work on the uh, afforestation programs within the watershed. A previous decision regarding energetic development in Vyotsa River Corridor that I showed to you now are under revision. There is no final decision, but through communication that we had with them, they have promised that they are going to revise this old plans and projects. As, uh, regarding the nature uh, parks, natural protected areas, Albanian, uh, the Ministry of Environment, Albanian government has allocated money to prepare management plan for them. Uh, and they are working to uh, designate these areas as a Natura 2000, which are part of the Viosa watershed. The Commission on, of, on Transboundary Water, it was not function. It was a very weak six years ago no meetings now. It is re-established by the by the Ministry of Envi by the government. It, it is composed by 12, the 13 line ministries, or 12 and the Ministry of Environment, 13, and the Academy of Science, which covers a network of scientific uh, institutions, is established. And the Deputy Minister that we met very often is the chairman of the Transboundary uh, Water Commission, which is a bilateral for Viosa with Greek. Is, be, is, is a bilateral commission for Macedonia with Fordrini and for other Montenegro, Kosovo and Montenegro countries. So now we have now a new uh, transboundary commission established by the government. So those are not linked 100% with our activities, but we assisted, we supported, we, let's say, uh, tried to convince the officials through meetings and discussion to do these uh, uh, steps. And now we have a very different pictures for Viosa and for river management in Albania in general. Uh, f uh, a few slides, uh, two slides. And uh, regarding the project, all the reports and documents produced for Viosa River, assessment, etc., vision and objectives, and the declaration is a very good basis for the elaboration of the management plan for Viosa and also for cooperation with Greek uh, counterpart to work on the common management of the uh, Viosa River. Also, what we have uh, applied for the uh, Viosa River is a good model that for other rivers in Albania. We could also, uh, maybe just a few main points, and then we can start with discussion. Because yeah, I finished, I finished. Finally, is the Viosa now, before it was uh, nothing in the agenda, now it is an uh, uh, important part of national agenda. And uh, cooperation with Greece is a priority within this agenda. I think that uh, as Albanian uh, team and with uh, Albanian geological survey and stakeholders, we had a very good uh, opportunity to cooperate with so many experts from different regional countries. We learned from them, we learned from each other, and uh, this helped us to implement the activities and to achieve uh, very uh, significant results for the, our Viosa River management and for river basin management in Albania. Thank you very much. Thank you for this <laughs> really comprehensive presentation. Okay, thank you. Hello to everybody. 
first of all, a few words just to relax the atmosphere. Uh, I want to thank for all my colleagues which was involved in uh, in this project, for all partners, for leading partner, uh, because we have the chance to work and exchange experience with you. Thank you. And secondly, I want to, to thanks to my team, which uh, some some of uh, them are mentioned here. Uh, it was an, uh, quite a challenge, an effort uh, to, to to go deep in this uh, in the frame of this project. In the first day, there was a mention uh, that uh, this project uh, took uh, 3,000 and so on liters of coffee, eight births, and one marriage. If I'm not wrong, the marriage refers to me. Uh, but I mentioned this in Romania of uh, uh, our steering committee meeting. I was not married with another beautiful woman. I have one. Uh, it was a marriage with this project. So it took me a lot of time. Somewhere, sometimes it was uh, incredible sweet, sometimes annoying. And uh, fortunately or unfortunately, after one month we will separate, but her testimony remains. Okay, so let's go to the facts. So my presentation, the content is uh, some data about Prut, uh, Prut River corridor action and pressures related to this one, starting point, approach, actions and results, objectives and vision related to the Prut River corridor and uh, future steps. Uh, Prut River is the largest, second largest tributary of the Danube with the total length about 960 kilometers and it springs from Ukraine and mainly constitutes the border between Romania, Ukraine and Republic of Moldova and flows into the Danube River. We have around 600, 650 kilometers the border with uh, Moldova, it's exclusively a, a river border. Uh, Prut River is the last main tributary of the Danube uh, and it's a gate to the Danube Delta biosphere with lakes, meanders, networks of ponds and natural channels. The main characteristic which defines Prut is the biodiversity and in this way uh, the Lower Prut was designated as the natural park called the Lower Prut floodplain on a surface of about uh, 800 and 8,300 hectares. The ecological importance of this natural park is recognized at the international level, almost the entire territory of the park being declared as a site of community. Importance area as integrated part of Natural 2000 sites. And we have four natural protected areas which define the Prut River on Romanian territory. Come on understanding the concept. The concept of the, uh, I will not insist on this, the concept of the corridor was mentioned in my previous, uh, for my, from my previous colleagues, and also in the first day from Bruno. Uh, basically, to resume and to make a simple definition, uh, that the river corridor was defined as uh, the main interest and human impact area across the Prut River. Uh, there was a lot of mentions in the frame of uh, presentations that uh, this new concept was rising an interest and the same was also in our case. At least uh, we had a very positive reaction from Moldova which took this uh, like a positive, uh, a very useful approach, the river corridor. Now, concerning the pressures uh, on the Prut, in the last 15 years, the human activities contributes to the increasing of pollution and changes of which change the Prut River natural course. We have big problems with the wastewater discharge from urban agglomeration, industry and far farms, changes in the land use, inadequate agriculture practices. For example, we have a lot of drainages which uh, and the land goes to agriculture, um, unfavorizes the, the biodiversity. 
and uh, spatial planning, which also influenced the status of the Prut River corridor. These issues uh, mainly are on the concerning the bo both uh, sides of the of the Prut. The agriculture, the only uh, also on the both sides, represents the most significant economic activity in the area. But despite this, uh, we have also regulation works because in the upstream of the Prut, nearby the border with the Ukraine, we have an, um, an hydropower plant, uh, which is in common with the Moldovian side. And uh, despite the regulation works, uh, which was built with, for the flood protection uh, purpose, the species and natural habitats are very well preserved. In these terms, Lower Put River was designated, as I mentioned before, the Natura 2000 site, natural park, and natural reserve. Also, a common part with uh, Moldova, a flooded area of Prut River is candidate to the Ramsar stat status site. And uh, we have to mention that the river corridor, Lower Prut is included in the program of the Green Corridor of the Lower Danube and the integrated management of wetlands will be extended in the lower Prut sector in the frame of the proposal for biosphere reserve between Romania, Moldova, and Ukraine. This is the main action that will uh, come into force in the very close future uh, period. Now, uh, why I mentioned that uh, it took us a lot of uh, effort and it was quite a challenge, challenge to work uh, uh, in, in the frame of this project because Prut uh, River itself represents a special case due to the fact that this it's a river border, a border in fact between non-EU and EU member states. During the project, uh, you know very well, uh, 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 also, Moldova and Ukraine signed a treaty for accession in the European country. And maybe after that, the things uh, we noticed that the things and the concepts and the strategy uh, from their side uh, starts to change in an easy way for, uh, for the moment, slow way for the moment, but uh, I think uh, in the next period will be quite accelerated. Uh, so, uh, we have, for the moment, several administrative and legal constraints. For example, when we was in our field to Prut, my colleagues was there, there was a forbidden to make photos. Personally, I don't know why, but there is a recommendation, legal one, uh, by the pol uh, border policy. So this is one of a short example of about the constraints. And this, uh, all, all these constraints influence a strong common planning approach and find, finding synergetic solutions for issues uh, that we are concerned on. Also, you have here on down, down the last picture uh, from Button, uh, our entrance in Ukraine. We stay for four hours. Uh, I, I could not put it here. Uh, because we uh, pass over a column of Russian tanks, and believe me, I, may, I make an one year of army, but to see Russian tanks nearby your car, it's completely strange <laughs> in this time. So uh, we was just in the middle of the conflict with, uh, between Ukraine and uh, Russia. Uh, the process of uh, Reaching the objective of the of the Sea River was uh, starting from adapting the Sea River communication strategy to the Prut River pilot case. So, in fact, we took the strategy uh, elaborated by the uh, lead partner, and uh, we adapted in the particular cases of the of the. Prut, respectively, with Moldova and Ukraine. So, based on the above target and identification, informing, consultation, and involvement strategy uh, about the Prut River corridor was developed. Two main target, two main target groups was uh, uh, were identified uh, in uh, this action. The first one 
and uh, we did it uh, this in cooperation with uh, both sides, small and poor communities along the Prut River corridor, which face the real problems, in fact. And the second one was the specialist, experts trained in form from the local, regional, and national different institutes, including the ministry and the uh, mayors. Uh, what we uh, achieve is that a um, very detailed stakeholders network from Romania, Moldova, and Ukraine has been established, and we have their uh, network on thematic uh, uh, areas like hydropower, agriculture, forest, whatever you want, contacts, uh, emails, and so on. As my colleague mentioned, uh, there was a pattern about these uh, meetings, so three national workshops and one international were organized. Uh, we have the chance that we, to organize the international one in Moldova, and uh, there was an increasing number of participants uh, after the first one, which was also organized in, uh, in Moldova, in Chisinau. And a lot of uh, stakeholders was involved there, I mentioned before, biodiversity, energy, agriculture, local council. And uh, the last meeting we had a surprise to come uh, to invite and they respond positively the border police. The process uh, of interviewing and consultation, consult consulting the stakeholders was based on the thematic questionnaires. So uh, three quest uh, the questionnaire was structured on four main chapters, four main issues, like uh, intersectoral gaps, significant challenges, objectives on in the integrative level, and significant obstacles concerning the Prut River Corridor management. Now some uh, shortly resume the results, like for example, uh, from the point of view of uh, legal aspects. Uh, it's a simple graph here, so I will mention three uh, different protection regimes on the two banks of the river, different legal frameworks, and uh, lack of legal framework for different cases, like for particular cases, like for example, gravel extraction. Uh, another issue was to identify the key aspects faced by any authority that would implement an integrated management along the corridor, and the uh, conclusion was that uh, there is a weak awareness uh, related to the public and especially to the local one, inconsistent legal framework along the both sides, and study specifically projects are needed. There was an intention from uh, uh, both sides, but somewhere, some uh, in a place, these initiatives are, are blocked. Another one is to analyze the most important challenges, and uh, the conclusions was the results was that uh, legislative integration and harmonization. Uh, for example, if the urban wastewater directive will uh, be implemented. Uh, in on the Moldovan side, this will solve uh, exclusively the problem of the pollution, chemical pollution uh, on Prut. So for the moment, uh, the quality of uh, chemical status of the Prut, it's uh, bad. But if they will apply uh, this uh, directive or the limits of this directive, this problem will be solved. So it's at least simple from this uh, point of view. Uh, common management strategies represents a priority and also an umbrella framework. We have two bilateral commissions with the Moldova and with Ukraine, but we don't have a tri trilateral one. This is one of the proposals that we, we will put it, uh, we put it uh, uh, in fact, in the, our action plan and our suggestion to the decision making factor. Another one is the needs to improve integrated management along the river, and the results are clearly increasing legislative capacity, strengthening the communication process. Now we have a communication strategy which was uh, quite uh, uh, was very well received by the ministry. 
and by other by other factors. In fact, we receive a lot of uh, requirements for for this contact of stakeholders and uh, increasing technical capacity. As I mentioned, uh, some particular cases like uh, gravel extraction. So to synthesize common management strategies, umbrella framework, and legislative harmonization are ma mainly the um, key aspects and the uh, challenges. Now, regarding the visions, uh, we try to make, during our uh, capacity building and our international one, uh, we're trying to, to, to define and vision as realistic as w we can in these terms. So there was a lot of debates, discussion, learned from other countries, like uh, the case of Drava. There was putting on the paper, but uh, again, uh, we have to recognize is that th this is for the moment, this is the reality. I will give you a short example. For example, when we put like a uh, legislative harmonization or uh, new working groups, uh, each time the experts from Ukraine has to call to Kiev and to said yes or no. Okay, so this is, was in fact the reality. I know I personally lived in that kind of times and uh, it's hard, but uh, again, uh, they signed a treat for, uh, treat, treated for uh, accession and we hope that these things will be voided in the future. Now, what we obtain, it's, uh, I put it here, uh, in fact we have 10, but I put it here, the, the most significant, it's reaching the good wa water quality for Prut, water supply for uh, users from both sides. There is a problem now with the water supply in Moldova, in the lower Prut. Ensuring, maintaining and extending an integrated management of wetlands, ensuring an integrated river basin management by taking into account all economic and social activity, and the last but not least is the cooperation in the field of flood risk management in a suitable way and ensuring that no unilateral flood protection works, <clears throat> sorry, which can produce damages on the other side will be executed. The future main steps, it's that all these reports and conclusions, uh, uh, all these results, achievement, conclusions, action plan uh, will be put in a final report. It's putting now in the final report. And this report uh, will be on the desk of bilateral commission. Uh, personally, I had uh, two meetings with the ch chairs of bilateral commission. I inform, we, I inform about this one and we hope that uh, in the end of November when the first bilateral mission, uh, last bilateral mission from this year will be, uh, this paper will be uh, put it on the agenda. And uh, what it mentioned that, uh, here is that uh, we need for uh, exchange of experience and common working groups are proposed for different thematic areas like quality, biodiversity or technical aspects. There are some proposals for continuity, there are in fact three. Uh, we'll also send this to the lead partner for their opinion and we'll see how we'll proceed in the future. So I think this is all. Thank you for your attention. Uh, okay. So uh, our, uh, I can, uh, Summarize that we, uh, our CEO will project uh, presented the main outputs and the main uh, activities on Drava uh, River. And uh, this session we are reporting our five pilot sites and our Bodox is the last one. So I will not repeat the same methodology because we, we, we used the same approach and we discussed during our project meetings about problems and we influenced our work each other. So Bodrog River is... So that Bodrog Pilot River approach was... Uh, we, I repeat that, that corridor concept, so not catchment, 
stakeholder involvement. So I would like to emphasize that uh, we uh, extended the obligation or interest of water framework directive because we, uh, that cross-sectoral approach was much wider. So we uh, concentrated our effort uh, to uh, special planning for agriculture policy and other policies uh, much uh, deep than in water framework directive. So it is a difference. Uh, but only on small corridor uh, or smaller corridor. So we, our, uh, our aim was, was, was to integrate that policies and to find uh, synergies in finances and in, in uh, efforts and, and so on. So uh, our pilot uh, is uh, in the eastern part of Slovakia. Uh, our neighbors are in the east Ukraine and in the south Hungary in the north Poland. So I, uh, I can mention that uh, according to our uh, uh, legislation, uh, Slovakia is uh, obliged to, to connect uh, upper parts of uh, uh, catchments uh, which are outside EU, so, so uh, Ukrainian parts is flowing, uh, Ukrainian rivers are flowing to Slovakia, so we are uh, responsible to to look to find uh, solutions for uh, together with Ukrainians and and also uh, uh, water river is flowing to Tisa, Tisa to Danube, Danube to Black Sea, and uh, according of our legislation, the water framework directive, the effort of member countries will be checked in, in coastal waters. So uh, coastal waters are decisive for our uh, work. So and th there is also Ukraine. So Ukraine is for us very special. We, we need Ukraine as a downstream country and also as a coastal country. And you can, you can see that, uh, that uh, river corridor is, uh, that, uh, except mountains part in uh, upstream uh, uh, territory, there is very large uh, lowland uh, where, where, uh, where, very, uh, where corridor is very wide. So, common issues for all three countries, for Hungary, Slovakia, and uh, Ukraine. So, promoting regional development, improvement of water management, and to, to have uh, outputs which are sustainable for the uh, next period and then after the project. So uh, we had, uh, similarly, like in other uh, sites, national level workshops. Then we discussed uh, on expert level the common potential, co uh, common goals. Then we had transnational workshop. And after that, and after discussions with our decisive uh, partners, we, we prepared and discussed a uh, broader vision and uh, also action plan. Uh, in Slovakia, there are uh, uh, some special problems, uh, like in other countries. So we have uh, mostly problems with agriculture and uh, erosion, and uh, especially property rights because uh, uh, the land land is uh, land is uh, land ownership is very trouble making in decision making. So. Finally, we we selected uh, possible solutions according of uh, available policies and available sort, uh, financial mechanisms, and uh, then we received some uh, outputs. So that partnership was established. Uh, so several projects was were executed uh, with effort of our project team. So we we received support from UNDP for six small projects, and we are uh, now pre preparing pre project proposals for next cooperation. In Hungary, there is uh, most important uh, that presence of natural conservation and uh, problems, uh, and uh, similarly, uh, co cooperation among uh, partners and so on is uh, important. So, uh, also that, that, that comes, complex development program for tourism, 
along the water river is a high priority for our Hungarian partners. But our Slovakian and Ukrainian partners accepted these ideas. And uh, they achieved some consensus of main stakeholders and also they prioritized problems and possible measures. In Ukraine, uh, the most, uh, most uh, probable, uh, important problem is uh, communalized waste management and abs absence of centralized wastewater treatment. So we, had, uh, we have very, uh, very good cooperation with our Ukrainian partners, both on that uh, local scale and uh, per, uh, per Carpatia, or also on the, on the national level, Bratislava Kiev. And uh, we discussed possible solutions and also based on our experiences from uh, EU and other sources. So I also, now in the, during this meeting, we are discussing possible next steps. And uh, we are very proud that uh, during our project, uh, our Ukrainian partners uh, have achievements that uh, uh, on the international level, that uh, Coca-Cola company supported our partners uh, in, uh, during uh, our work. <laughs> and also, feasibility study of drinking water preparation is, is in under preparation. And uh, we expect that uh, after recent developments in Ukraine, so it looks that that European direction will be uh, important, so we will uh, be in close uh, connection and cooperation, and we are very happy to transfer some positive or also negative uh, experiences in implementing of EU legislation. So that Bodrog vision and action plan, uh, we the, the problem was uh, that uh, each uh, stakeholder has a uh, slightly different opinion, so, but we finally uh, prepared a list of eight strategic, strategic targets. So it is uh, the, the, this list in this, in this uh, page. And uh, uh, also we prepared more concrete 17 area of measures. So it was uh, the main output of our cooperation. I think. Lessons learned. So I repeat uh, experiences of all that uh, the relevant stakeholders are uh, uh, the most important, but are, are interested, but uh, it is uh, not not easy task. And uh, also we can say that EU and uh, all individual national and other financial support schemes are very complex. So it is impossible to uh, uh, understand with individual body all aspects of this co complex system. So this consultation we are uh, we, 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 we have in, the, in our project was very necessary, and the, the, this, the project facilitating this consultation. So we had money for these uh, meetings and. Uh, for their work. And also we can summarize that uh, our participants on both national and international level were very active. And uh, because we know that from our previous experiences that it was not easy to have active and, uh, and, uh, and responsible representatives, not only uh, secondary level. And uh, now we are uh, preparing uh, uh, that follow our activities and also, also we, it means that also we, uh, we will ensure that sustainability of our results in the next years because uh, if we stop communication with uh, decisive partners for one year, it is everything interrupted. <laughs> Well, thank you very much. Thank you very much. I, uh, although I know that we are uh, time limited and uh, everybody uh, uh, is keen to have the lunch, uh, I have to 
tell a few words uh, before I will start the presentation. And so just uh, really to express uh, sincerely that uh, UNESCO and in particular our office in Venice and of course uh, myself personally, uh, we are uh, very glad to have a po opportunity to participate uh, at this important uh, forum uh, like uh, uh, European River Restoration Conference uh, is and uh, uh, that it is also important for us uh, to uh, share with you our approaches and to show you also uh, the work and strategic approach uh, which uh, UNESCO has uh, in particular um, in, uh, in support uh, and uh, facilitating the development of uh, shared uh, river, uh, shared um, water, uh, water resources and in this particular case. Uh, case uh, shared uh, uh, within shared uh, river basins. I would like also to uh, to uh, express uh, a big uh, appreciation that uh, UNESCO uh, could be part and is still has been par a part of the Sea River project. Although we were just uh, as the observer partners, uh, but uh, um, uh, we are sure that uh, we could not only bring uh, some uh, some. Uh, uh, approaches, share some experience, but uh, what was uh, highly important for us that uh, we could learn a lot of uh, from all the partners, from all uh, their work, and uh, to, to see the uh, evolving, uh, evolving of their effort, which uh, uh, which uh, resulted uh, in particular on uh, excellent uh, understanding what uh, does it mean the stakeholders' approach and stakeholder involvement. I think that uh, this is uh, one of the uh, of the uh, of the tool or one of the uh, key issue uh, which uh, brought such a big success uh, to the uh, to the sea river project that uh, really the, the all the partners uh, they uh, performed uh, that uh, the stakeholders involvement is the key in any action and of course in particular when it is uh, uh, related to the management of uh, shared ecosystems and uh, in this uh, regard uh, uh, river along uh, river corridors. So once more, uh, uh, thank you for that possibility to be part of that. And also, I may declare not only on my behalf but also uh, on our office behalf uh, that uh, we will. Um, definitely uh, facilitate uh, uh, some kind of the sustaining of uh, results uh, which uh, Sea River project uh, uh, has uh, reached and um, we will uh, be glad uh, to disseminate uh, further all the uh, key outputs and uh, outcomes always uh, bearing in mind that uh, the, 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 the brand Sea River project is overarching but um, uh, that uh, UNESCO is uh, very glad uh, that uh, could contribute by its uh, approaches and uh, some cases to that. Thank you very much. And so now I will start uh, um, with the uh, presentation, which uh, might uh, familiar, familiarize you uh, with uh, our designated sites in this uh, regard, uh, biosphere reserves, uh, which are model sites for sustainable development, and uh, to, uh, to show you how uh, we are trying to Link it with uh, other uh, other approaches and other initiatives in the areas concerned. You know very well from the region that uh, the, in the southeastern European region, uh, rivers uh, are often threatened by unsustainable use, increasing human pressure, and of course problems uh, of increased uh, floods and uh, droughts, uh, which are driven by uh, climate uh, change. 
the most uh, pressures are uh, occurring in uh, river corridors, uh, which uh, then challenging, uh, which are then challenging the sustainable water and riparian land use. Uh, in cases when uh, the river corridors uh, are belonging to shared river basins, and uh, it is um, in a cases of uh, UNESCO geographic focus uh, the most uh, the, the prevailing uh, the prevailing situation. Uh, then the cooperative management of transboundary water bodies and the related ecosystems has to be obligatory condition. And uh, all the effort uh, uh, to enhance it, it's uh, really sh sh should be uh, should be set up as the essential need. And. Uh, uh, we know that the uh, transboundary cooperation uh, for the management in each of the shared water bodies is uh, uh, influenced by the developments uh, at political and also at a socio-economic uh, scene at levels. And uh, it is uh, also not only at a national, but also at a, at a regional level. And uh, these issues uh, uh, shall be considered uh, when uh, talking and um, and uh, uh, facilitating uh, actions uh, to transboundary cooperation. Because these issues are important uh, extremely in this uh, southeastern European region, uh, because 90% uh, of, the, of the area of, uh, of these uh, countries uh, has, um, uh, is, is belonging to transboundary river basins. Uh, therefore, uh, UNESCO using its uh, sites and uh, uh, other tools uh, is uh, uh, undertaking activities which are aiming uh, to build capacities at national levels uh, to have uh, including institution, not only the, the individual trainings, but also institutional trainings. Uh, also, it's facilitating the designation processes uh, for the biosphere reserves as the main tools uh, for the sustainable development and uh, also it's focusing on the institutional arrangements and building capacities in this regard. And of course um, uh, another compo component uh, of the or set of activities uh, shall be focused uh, on uh, the education and also learning uh, from examples. And an important part of the activities is uh, to uh, seek for funding uh, the cooperative and or international uh, projects. Uh, this uh, set of the, um, of the activities or main components is uh, valid since uh, 2004 when we have, uh, no, when we uh, arranged uh, or uh, organized international workshop uh, on a transboundary cooperation in Southeast Eastern European region, and which was also uh, focused on uh, showing uh, linkages with uh, map biosphere reserves and also with, uh, uh, with shared basins. Uh, uh, thus, uh, our uh, office is uh, uh, is uh, has, uh, is providing uh, the support to uh, its uh, member states and uh, also to support the activities uh, uh, to improve transboundary cooperation and uh, involvement of stakeholders uh, in uh, the management of shared uh, water resources. Uh, in this uh, regard, he has uh, also important important um, vehicle for that, uh, using the network of uh, UNESCO International Hydro uh, Hydrological Program National Committees. And also it's a uh, <coughs> Uh, it's a building on uh, on experience and best practices of the so-called uh, IHP Danube cooperation, uh, to and all this uh, is helping to facilitate mobilization, knowledge, and expertise in order to support uh, uh, IER uh, BM approaches. 
And uh, as I already mentioned, uh, we are also using uh, in, in that uh, uh, the designated sites in this uh, regard uh, the biosphere reserves because UNESCO has another designated site, so which uh, probably you are more familiar with. Uh, and uh, these uh, those ones are uh, world heritage sites, but uh, for the for the sustainable development are uh, more. Um, um, our, um, our used uh, biosphere reserves uh, as uh, platforms for transboundary cooperation and also for the multi-purpose uh, management. And uh, the, all the inform all the interventions are focused uh, inter alia uh, because it's uh, besides uh, some research, monitoring activities, educational and awareness activities are focused on a transboundary cooperation and uh, uh, on fostering uh, joint actions uh, to protect and remediate uh, catchment processes. Uh, in, uh, in selected areas, and then to uh, to uh, to extend it uh, to another basins areas. Uh, so, uh, thus the transboundary cooperation is offering uh, for UNESCO and, of course, its uh, member states a new dimension to develop its designated sites, uh, both, uh, as I mentioned, natural world heritage sites, but uh, the, the primarily um, biosphere reserve sites. And uh, the cooperation is uh, prerequisite and it's uh, one of the key catalysts uh, to develop uh, transboundary boundary biosphere reserves, which uh, can provide a tool for common management of uh, shared ecosystems and also can, uh, can uh, facilitate the, the management um, or can provide, uh, provide uh, contribution to facilitate um, the management of uh, shared, uh, shared ecosystems. Uh, within another uh, within another frameworks uh, also the transboundary cooperation uh, support and facilitate uh, the nominations uh, transboundary nominations of biosphere reserves and uh, management processes uh, along uh, river corridors and basins and has uh, is uh, is uh, an uh, important opportunity uh, uh, to uh, to promote and to strengthen cooperation between uh, the men and biosphere and the international uh, hydrological program uh, programs uh, by linking water and biodiversity and uh, also landforms and hydrological systems and also facilitate uh, cooperation uh, integration of ecosystem services into management of transboundary shared water uh, systems. And uh, all this uh, utilization and conservation of land and water resources should go hand in hand and therefore the interdisciplinary cross-sectoral and participatory approach and uh, long-term vision are key. Uh, in the region, we have uh, three pillars of our actions. Uh, as I already mentioned, uh, it's uh, the pivotal role of the MAP program, uh, hydrological program, especially integration with the shared waters, and uh, uh, as, uh, the cross-cutting theme is education for sustainable development, which is uh, for the water issues and for the proper management, uh, it's, it's uh, also essential, uh, essential parts. Uh, when I talked about the biosphere reserves as model sites for sustainable development, I should uh, uh, remind you to those uh, ones who are not so much uh, familiar that they have uh, three interconnected functions, conservation, sustainable use, and uh, logistic supports. And all these uh, functions are uh, are uh, facilitating the the, um, uh, the the approach to the sustainable development. Uh, we have in um, uh, southeastern Europe uh, 28 uh, biosphere reserves. Uh, in uh, Black Sea and Caucasus countries, oh sorry, uh, there is uh, now 
52 biosphere uh, reserves. And uh, you can see that uh, there is a big uh, potential for, um, uh, for the establishment of a biosphere, of a transboundary biosphere reserves. And here is the map uh, with the integration of the water resources uh, management and biosphere reserves and transboundary uh, river basins of interest are um, identical also with the sites uh, where we are planning to have the transboundary biosphere reserves. And so our strategic approach in the sea region is focused yeah, 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 so just three minutes. It's a focus to enhance cooperative management of transboundary water bodies and related ecosystems through uh, three, uh, three main components, uh, uh, facilitating interaction between policymakers and researchers uh, to, uh, to, to use such uh, called knowledge brokering processes uh, to deliver politically relevant knowledge to decision makers on uh, issues uh, such as sediment transport, ecohydrology, uh, etc. And of course, improving stakeholder, stakeholders in involvement in a governance of water resources and related ecosystems. And uh, now it's a part of the, of the presentation is uh, devoted to uh, to the area of Lower Prut uh, in the Republic of Moldova, but uh, we had a uh, great familiar familiarization with uh, uh, Prut River already from the Romania, uh, so I will focus just on the, some key achievements and key approach uh, we UNESCO are focusing in, uh, in that uh, area in uh, the Republic of Moldova. Uh, so, uh, in, um, uh, in contrary with uh, Romania, uh, the Republic of Moldova has not established uh, yet any biosphere uh, reserve, and uh, uh, UNESCO provided, our office provided a lot of uh, uh, support recently uh, to that. Uh, and uh, there, uh, there is the long-term goal is to strengthen the capacity building and institutional framework uh, for establishment of this biosphere reserve and uh, for sustainable uh, environmental management. We got... We can clarify it a little bit in discussion because... Just yeah, okay, okay, so ju just where I... Uh, the, uh, do I have two, two minutes? You're on time, but... We have just five minutes, then it's lunch, so maybe... Okay, so just, uh, it's, uh, it's already done. The main achievements, uh, uh, in, uh, main achievements are in that, that uh, it uh, was proved um, the, the involvement of key stakeholders uh, like local authorities and co uh, communities um, uh, from the beginning of uh, such process uh, that it's uh, the important modality to have the support on, uh, on that. And also the Moldova developed the recommendations to the government uh, to, uh, to, um, to catalyze uh, for, their, uh, for their actions to establish the biosphere reserves. And uh, they uh, agreed uh, several actions and the way forward. And uh, the important, one of the important conclusions is uh, that uh, in the case uh, uh, like uh, Moldova and uh, other countries which are sharing uh, resources, the uh, trans boundary biosphere reserve model is a very useful conceptual and operational framework for cooperation on relevant shared resources. Thank you. And uh, to properly start the process, it is needed to generate a common vision and uh, to clarify and foster a proper stewardship of the entire process. And this is... Okay, thank, thank you, Marie. It was really... <laughs> To see this, this UNESCO efforts that which are really, I mean, extensive and really, really for going on for a long time. So thank you very yeah. much for presentation. You were last, uh, and you were yeah. a little bit uh, in the worst position. Yeah, and so okay. Thank you. But uh, was you I in time? Uh, was you I were in on time. <laughs> we had to speed you up a little yeah, because of course, we. Of course, uh, okay. Yeah. Thank you.